Okay, so you've probably seen this movie. I need a doctor. We all need a doctor. Paul Gross, Passchendaele, or even this one. I was gonna go for a ski, but I thought I shouldn't chance it. What with the Alzheimer's and all? Away from her, also Canadian, scored a couple of Oscar nods. While those films might not exist had it not been for this one. There's hundreds of jobs here. It's good here. Let me see that beat. Going Down the Road, made on a shoestring budget back in 1970, pretty much jump-started the entire English-Canadian film industry. Critics on both sides of the borders raved about it. Going Down the Road was raw. It told the story of a couple of Maritimers who make their way to Toronto in search of good jobs and good times, and it showed us something we had rarely seen before, a realistic look at the Canadian dream gone bad. Jesus, boy, we're 1,500 miles from home, and we only got 30 bucks between us. How long do you think that's going to last? It was a landmark moment in our culture, even if some of us only knew about it initially through the SCTV parody. You're going to love it in Toronto. They got lots of jobs, doctoring jobs and lawyering jobs. Jobs for me and you! Oh, Gord, we got a kid coming, and you haven't got a job. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't know. I've got to think about it. The best place to think about it is Young Street! But it also put the film's young director, Don Shabib, on the map. Though when Hollywood came knocking, Don didn't go down the road. He stayed here, made a number of films. But you know what? He'll always be connected to his biggest movie. And now, 40 years later, Don is reconnected. He made a sequel. Down the road again. It answers the question, what happened to Pete and Joey? Hi, Betty. It also brings together most of the original cast, the wonderful Jane Eastwood, who you may have seen in films like Chicago and Hairspray. Well, she made her film debut in the original Going Down the Road which, with its themes of bad jobs, bad debts, and hard times, still resonates today. I know this isn't much. All it's just gonna have to do right now until, until we get on our feet. Please welcome John Shabib and Jenny Floyd. Hi, guys. George, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, how are you? Come on, Don, good to see you, man. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. Ooh, we're on the George Strombolopoulos show. <laughs> You're on the red chairs. <laughs> Thanks for, for joining us. Uh, Thank I mean, you. Obviously, you know the impact that your film has had, and to be able to do it again must be pretty, it must be a treat, but it must be a pretty odd experience, was it? Well, it was an emotional experience making the film because, you know, two of the people had passed away, Richard Leiterman, the cameraman, and Paul Bradley, who was the guy we all adored. We all wanted to kill him yeah. half the time, but we all <laughs> adored him. And then, of course, Kale Chernin, who was very deftly ill throughout the film, we didn't even know it. And she passed away. We didn't know it until after the film was finished. Why a 40 year wait to see what happened to Pete and Joy? Uh, well, people have been bugging me for years to, to do a sequel, and I just didn't, you know, who wants to do a sequel? So, mm -hmm. how did it, so this is a return for you as well. I mean, what, to, oh, it was a massive return <laughs> for me because the thing is, going down the road started my whole career in Canada. Yeah. I mean, this man is responsible for me sitting here talking to you, you know? And um, so when they, I knew that this was in the works, but I never thought Don would do it because Kale Chernin, interestingly enough, had been, she's a, she was a very good friend of Don's and she was trying to push him to do it. And I thought, oh, it's really scary. Very, very scary thing to do. But I trusted Don as a filmmaker. I knew it wouldn't be a clunker, you know, but I knew that people would judge us for sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you think the story's changed? Um, you know, what, what really helped that film work was that it was heavy, man. And you watch these guys going for it and it's, we hadn't told stories like that before. Canadians don't really tell their own story. And the Canadian dream not working. All of that. Has that changed? Do you think the relationships changed? I mean, we didn't have homeless people in 1970. It's now, more relevant now, isn't they're it? They're all over the yeah. place, you know. Mm -hmm. There weren't people in the dire straits that Paul, uh, Pete, and Doug, were, uh, Pete and Joey were in those days. Now it's it's quite commonplace, you know. Do you think when you first saw the SCTV bit for a whole generation, that's how like that's how I first heard about the movie <laughs> was I saw it on SCTV and I'm like what is this is amazing, and then I found out what it was. But for you, what did you think when you saw it? Oh, I loved it. I, I was always a bit big SCTV fan. <laughs> <Yeah. TV. laughs> And of course, Jane was in it, and she was fabulous. Well, I was in it. Well, that, that was written by my my two brothers-in-law and my husband, David Flaherty, who teaches comedy writing at Humber yeah. now, and Joe Flaherty and Paul Flaherty. Paul was the guy who did the music that to it and add it and add it and to yeah. it and to it and to it and to it in. And then, of course, I was in it, and it's just hilarious. And they, they kept saying, well, do you think Shabib will like it? It's, he's going to love it. Oh, and I, you just loved it, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. But the idea of it, when you make a film that is, it's not that you made a good film, because you did. You made a great film, but you made a seminal film. And when you make a seminal film, that becomes the film you're known for. And same thing with musicians and big hit songs. It becomes really hard for them to kind of escape the shadow of it. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel like it was a shadow that you couldn't get away from? 
Uh, not really. I never really paid much attention to it. I mean, it was just trying to make another film after that. You know, I never really thought that back. I had no idea that it was ever going to be the success it was. All I ever wanted was one showing with one audience. That's all, th that's all I ever thought I would get out of it. Because at that time, it was my 20th film. I'd made 20 films by that point. Right. Not features, but that was my first. And I just wanted to try my hand at making a feature film. Has he changed as a director over, over that time? He hasn't changed at all. <laughs> he hasn't changed a bit. Well, when, when we first did it, I mean, I'd never done a movie in my life. And I, I was paid a whopping $600 to do the movie. And I thought, that's pretty cool. And I remember... 600 bucks a lot of cash. Yeah, it was. It was, it was pretty was good bad. when you were 21 years old. Sure. And, but, and he was like, ooh, he was a big director, so I was kind of afraid of him. But he was a doll. And this time he was like a real pussycat. <laughs> and he had, a, you know, a lot of pressure this time, too. This is the closing of a chapter for you, in a way? Um, maybe, I guess. I haven't thought of it that way, but it might be. And so, do you have the next story you want to tell? Oh, I've got, Christ, ten stories I want to tell. <laughs> you know, whether I'll ever get a chance to make them in this country is another story. And, uh, but... Well, well, then what's the next step? What do you need to start telling these stories? Uh, producers who will believe in what I want to do. Mm -hmm. We need stories, we need films that make people laugh and cry in whatever order. Is it a cohesive community? Are people pushing in the same direction? Well, I think the, the community is too cohesive. It's a bit of a, it's awfully clickish here in Toronto. Yeah. What's next for you? Well, I'm, I'm still doing Women Fully Clothed, yeah. which is my live show with uh, Teresa Pavlovnik and Kathy Greenwood and, and Robin, Robin Duke. And we're also starting... Also CTV, Robin Duke? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And we're starting an American tour tomorrow. That's Go amazing. to New Hampshire tomorrow. That's great to see you. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on the program. Thank you. Thanks. really appreciate your time. Thanks, George. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> the movie is called Down the Road Again. It's in theaters now. Don Shabib, Janie Smith, we'll be right back.